Hello again from Digicore Things. Recently, somebody mentioned that they were planning on using a TMS9918 VDP chip with the MECB TMS VDP display card. As I live in a PAL 50Hz TV standard country, my original experimentation with the TMS VDP chip and also the chips I had in my parts drawer were all TMS 9929A 50Hz chips. This VDP version and its TMS 9928 60Hz NTS market equivalent feature colour difference outputs intended for an external colour encoder circuit. Devices using the TMS VDP in the PAL market typically use the TMS 9929 with an external PAL encoder chip to deliver a composite video signal to an onboard RF modulator for TV connection. The mention of the TMS 9918 reminded me that in the NTSC market, the TMS 9918 variant would have been the most popular and well known with its convenient direct composite video output. Unfortunately, there was no 50Hz PAL equivalent, which, I guess, would have logically been named the TMS9919 if such a device had been released. With my TMS9929 background, and of course my desire for the best possible video quality output, my focus when creating the existing VDP card was using the TMS9929 or the TMS9928 in combination with the recent TMS RGB module for a really nice and clean RGBS output. But it occurred to me that not everyone, particularly those more familiar with the TMS9918, may want to get hold of a TMS RGB module or would necessarily need the optimal RGB output quality. With this in mind, I decided that I'd enhance the existing MECB TMS VDP card to make it an all-encompassing TMS VDP solution, which supports the TMS9929 and TMS9928 for RGB output, as well as the TMS9918 with its composite video only output. This then avoids any need for somebody to make a custom composite video output solution to support using the TMS9918 on this card for those who want to use it. So let's take a look at the updated schematic. As you can see, I've added a new section inside a box to differentiate the additional circuitry desired for supporting the TMS9918 instead. The card works just as it did previously with a TMS9929 or 9928 and a TMS RGB module. You simply don't populate the additional components within the boxed area. I've also added a couple of pre-linked PCB jumpers to allow easy isolation of the circuit in the event a TMS9918 user later decides to switch to the TMS9928 or 9929 and TMS RGB module solution. Likewise, if the PCB jumpers are cut, it will be equally easy to re-solder bridge them if later reverting back to a TMS9918. As I've chosen the Sega Mega Drive 2 video connector standard for the video output, we are good to go, as this connector also includes a pin assignment for composite video as well as RGB, we can use the same connector for both solutions. With a TMS9918, obviously the RGB signal won't be available, so an ordinary Mega Drive 2 composite video lead will do the job nicely. In terms of the additional circuitry, this simply provides a transistor buffer to drive the composite video output at an appropriate impedance. This output circuit being supplied with a noise filtered 5 volt power via the ferret bead and capacitors intended to minimise the presence of digital noise on the video output. It's also worth noting that although it is possible to provide a composite video output directly from the TMS9918 chip's composite video output pin 
Doing so has two downsides. Firstly, there is no protection for the TMS chip if directly connecting it to the video output. Secondly, the typical 75 ohm impedance of a monitor's video input puts additional load on the TMS VDP chip, causing it to run a lot hotter. This is avoided if an external transistor buffer is used, also ensuring the video output impedance is more appropriately matched. Finally, Note also that with the TMS9918, we avoid installing R1 and R3. On the TMS9929 and TMS9928, these resistors are required for the colour difference outputs. But on the TMS9918, these pins are an optional video input and an NTSC colour burst frequency clock output, 3.579 MHz both of which are unused and can be left unconnected. So let's take a look at the PCB layout. As you can see, the PCB literally just adds the boxed additional component section, which has been clearly labelled with the TMS9918 only silkscreen. So to utilise a TMS9918, you just need to populate these additional components instead of fitting a TMS RGB module. On the reverse side of the PCB under the VDP. Oh, and also leave off R1 and R3. Simple. So, for a final test of the revised TMS VDP card, I'll first pre build one of the new cards up to the point of the previously assembled card in an earlier video, so that we can then go ahead with adding the new additional components and test the card with a TMS9918 VDP chip. Remembering also to leave off R1 and R3. So let's get that done. Now I'll add the additional TMS9918 components. I'll start with the resistors. Then the transistor.
than the capacitors. Lastly, the ferret bead. Finally, I'll solder on the three connectors. Now, with the additional components assembled and no TMS RGB module attached, let's insert a TMS 9918A VDP chip. I'll then migrate the other chips over from my existing TMS 9929 VDP card as these are all known good devices and also my pre-programmed PLD so this is the existing card I'll take out the PLD And I'll take out the DRAM next. Then the two other support chips. Right, with that done, I'll swap the standoffs over. Right, and we'll plug the new card into the back plane.
Lastly, I plug in a composite video monitor using a standard Mega Drive composite video cable. Right, I think we're ready for our first test. Let's apply power. Then I'll transfer the same initial test that I used when testing the original VDP card. And let's run it. And all looks good. I'll put up a similar capture of my TMS9929 RGBS card so you can compare the images. You may notice that the image is not as pixel perfect sharp as the RGBS output of the TMS 99T9. But that is expected, as composite video is known for its visual artifacts, which are a result of combining the luminance and chrominance components of a video signal. Not to mention that this is NTSC as opposed to PAL. But I'm happy with the result. I'm sure this update will be appreciated by those in the NTSC market who are more familiar with the TMS9918. I've now updated the MECB GitHub repository and the Tindy store listing to reflect the version 1.2 changes and to also add the option of a pre-tested TMS9918 chip. So we now have a TMS VDP card that satisfies all flavours of this TMS VDP chip i.e. the TMS9928, TMS9929, as well as the TMS9918. Awesome. That's it. Thanks for watching.